Let's take a look at what a test cross is. It's a pretty simple concept, but you just have to recognize the phrase test cross as something very specific and to give examples of it. So let's use eye color. Remember that eye color is actually more complex than this, but it's a good way to start understanding some basics of, gen of genetics. So here we have two characters. Uh, they both look like women's eyes. But anyways, one is supposed to be male, one's female. We don't really care which is which because it's not a sex-linked trait. So here we go. Uh, let's just go through step by step. So this character has blue eyes. So I have blue eyes. Tell me what my phenotype is. Well, phenotype is just your physical trait, so that's obviously blue eyes. I have brown eyes. Tell me what my phenotype is. Obviously, that's brown. Oh, I just erased the word. Shame on you brown eyes. So what are, this, what are the genotypes? Well, if we use our basic let big B be the allele for brown eyes and let little b be the allele for blue eyes, well, I know that if I have blue eyes, it has to be because I have two of the little b's, two recessive traits. So little b, little b. So that's easy. That's where the test cross comes in here, comes into play, because for blue eyes, it's easy to identify because I know I have to have both of the recessive uh, alleles to be able to have blue eyes. But when I have brown eyes, unless I know some information about my parents or my kids, then it's harder to tell. So a test cross helps me to figure out exactly what type of brown-eyed person I am, because I could be big B, big B, or I could be big B, little b. So how do I know? Well, in an ideal world, you would make this person with an unknown genotype have uh, babies with someone who has a known genotype. So if they're blue eyes, then they must be little b, little b. So I do the cross, and this, these are the possible outcomes that I might predict. So let's take this first situation here where I assume their genotype is big B, big B. If they are big B, big B, and I cross them with a blue-eyed person who is little b, little b, separate out all of the gametes, so big B, big B, here are the possibilities, little b, little b. If you're quick, you probably already figured out what the only possible kids would be. All of these outcomes will be the same. If I drag this over here, drag this over here, drag this over here, drag this over here, so on and so forth, all four outcomes will be exactly the same, and they will all be heterozygous, they will all be big B, little b. 100% of the kids will have brown eyes if this person was homozygous dominant, big B, big B. If it's the other situation and this person is actually heterozygous, big B, little b, and then we cross them with the blue-eyed person, let's see what we get. Well, we separate these gametes out by the law of segregation. There's a big B, there's a little b. This individual, their gametes go here. Bring this across, bring this across. I know for 50% of them, they will be big B, little b, just like what happened over here. But the other 50% will be little b, little b. So the outcome in this situation is we'll have 50% of the kids with brown eyes and 50% will have blue eyes. So it really depends on this particular parent, whether they have uh, two copies of the dominant allele or if they're heterozygous. So the outcome will be totally different. That's how you know. That's what a test cross is. And we would never do this for humans. You know, man meets woman, the woman says, hey, I want to know if you have the possibility, if you carry the, the genes for having blue eyes in the future, can we just have babies first, look at the outcome, have four kids, tally it all up, and then I'll just decide if we're going to be a good match or not. It's not going to work for humans, that's silly. But uh, people actually do this for animals, for breeding, various types of situations, and, I'll, uh, and for plants. Uh, there are less ethical repercussions for trying this out with plants, at least from the human perspective. And so this happens a lot to try to figure out if a plant or an animal is pure breeding. Pure breeding usually means that they have, um, they're have they not heterozygous. They're either big B, big B, or whatever trait we're talking about. It could be leaf color or seed color or seed shape. Pure breeding means they are they have two copies of the same allele, two copies of the same allele. So that is what a test cross is. And in summary, here is uh, something you can write down. The purpose of a test cross is to determine the genotype of an individual who shows the dominant phenotype. This is done by crossing with a homozygous recessive individual. If all offspring look like the parent, like in this case here, they're all going to be brown, then homozygous dominant is the actual genotype. If 50% of the offspring are different, then the parent was actually heterozygous. So that, in short, and that's all you need to know really about what it, what a test cross is and what it is used for. Just, it's an easy concept, but just remember that's what a test cross is referring to. All right, good luck.